My name is Terry Nelson. I'm on the Board of Directors of LEAP, which is Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. I've been a spokesperson for LEAP since six months after I retired from federal service. When I was trying to find this place today, I said, where are those long-haired, pill-popping, pot-smoking hippie freaks? <laughs> Obviously, I didn't find the right place. Because as I look around, y'all look normal with an A. <laughs> so uh, I think with over 50% of the people in this country, you may have to change your acronym because you guys are the normal ones now. Uh, I'm not a trained professional public speaker, but I'm always told that you're supposed to start off with a joke. So you probably know this. If you do, be kind to me because I'm old and laugh anyway. This uh, federal narcotics agent went up to this farm and he says, I need to search your property for cannabis plants. And the farmer says, well, okay, no problem. He said, but stay out of that wooded area over there to the right. And the guy whips out his badge and he says, see that badge, buddy? That badge says I can go anywhere I want to and see anything I want to see. And the farmer says, hey, no problem. He goes back to his chores. A few minutes later, he hears a terrifying scream and he runs over the fence and breaking that brush line on the other side is this narcotics agent. And right behind him is a big brimmer bull blowing snot on the back of his pants. And the farmer hollers at him, show him your badge, show him your badge. <laughs> Thank you for being kind, I appreciate it. I want to start off with a recent comment from Attorney General Holder. He says the sheer number of Americans contending with these challenges is staggering. Well over two million people are currently behind bars in this country. As a nation, we are coldly efficient in our incarceration efforts. And then he goes on to say, one in 28 children, I am technologically challenged with this computer, one in 28 children has a parent in prison. For African Americans, that ratio is one in nine. And total of 700,000 people are released from federal prison every year, nine in 10 American, million Americans through local jails. This is the Attorney General admitting total failure or to me, that's admitting total failure. <laughs> I'm also a spokesperson for DPFT, Drug Policy Forum of Texas. I've been around this game for a long time. I, uh, these are just some pictures of my early years. Down here on the right, this is the uh, 2,300 and some odd pounds of cannabis, 15 gallons of hash oil, all of it in a 28-foot sailboat. Didn't think you could get that much on a sailboat, but we did, or they did. These are some other ways it's delivered for those of you that don't know a lot about it. Airdropped in plastic bags, covered into the ocean with little locator devices on it so they can go back later and get it. And it's very, very difficult. Absolutely never gonna win it. My law enforcement experience, I began my federal career in 1974. I ended it in 2005. I put this up just to establish my credentials. I'm not a slacker. I did my job. I took the king's coin. I did the king's business. And in the course of this career, I did not make one single arrest for pot possession. All of my arrests, all of my arrests were for illegal importation of Scott. My job first was to protect the borders, and second was to protect the revenue. So if you paid taxes on your pot, I wouldn't have had any issues with you. So because you were bringing in, you entered it into the economy with, uh, into the economy without paying taxes, it's against the law, and it should be against the law. You should pay your fair share of taxes like everyone else. 
I don't like to defend the drug czar, but I'm going to in this case. Title VII of the Office of National Drug Control Policy Reauthorization Act of 98 says that he has to lie to you. He is not allowed to tell you the truth. He's not allowed to have free and open discussion of this. He always has to present the other side of the fence. So I kind of feel bad for him in some, in some kill. I'd like to show this slide, and you've all seen it many times, I'm sure. And I want to talk a little bit about hypocrisy. With 46% of the population of America, and about 112 million people having used cannabis in their lifetime, and the last three sitting presidents have used it. Well, one of them can't remember, he was too drunk. <laughs> Isn't it the height of hypocrisy that they want to send your kid or your grandkid to prison for what they did? I think it is. Now, I'm a re registered Republican for 40 some odd years, and I'm a former board member of the Republican Liberty Caucus, which was trying to get the Republican Party back to the center. But this isn't a Republican or a Democratic issue. This is an American issue, and it needs to be addressed. Hypocrisy has to stop. Prohibition has failed, and it's failed to totally. I'm going to show you a few things. Well, we're a 501c3 education organization, so I'm going to try to give you some facts that you can use in your arguments when you're defending your position with people that don't necessarily agree with you. And hang out with people that don't agree with you because you can learn from them and you can teach them something too. The government says that we've reduced cocaine and smuggling by 65% out of Colombia. But they don't mention the fact that we've gone up 41% in Peru and 112% in Bolivia. Now why are these numbers important? They're important because with 368,000 acres of, ca of coca under cultivation, that's about 2 million pounds of blow a year. And this is after 40 years and trillions and trillions of dollars in untold human lives that are lost. And you can't call this victory, not with a straight face. Afghan poppy population. The New York Times reported yesterday that there's been a 7% increase in the amount of poppy planted in Afghanistan. We occupy the country. I don't want that to happen in America. $1.4 billion or 9% of the Afghan economy comes from the sale of opium. And the irony of all this is right across the border in Turkey they grow opium for poppy seeds and for, med and for medical purposes to cultivate, to use the, for uh, morphine, but not in Afghanistan. Eradication efforts went up by 65% in this last year. But there's 195,000 hectares or 483,000 acres of opium planted in Afghanistan. Rhode Island has 776,000 acres. So more than half the state of Rhode Island would be planted in, in poppies if you were here in the United States. So 40 years of prohibition is not working, it's not going to work, and these numbers say it. Now as a police officer, I want to address the issues of the threat to America other than the uh, drugs, which I don't think are a threat. The 2011 FBI gang threat assessment, in other words, cartel members, etc., have increased in numbers exponentially. There were about 380 some odd cities four years ago that had major cartel influence. This year it's 1,000 American cities have major cartel influence. There's 1.4 million gang members in these gangs. And if anybody in this room thinks that if these guys were to hit the street on any given time, we have enough police or military to stop them, we don't. And this problem can be addressed and can be fixed by lifting prohibition, because you take away the money, you cut off the head of the snake. That's the one thing I agree with George Bush on when he was dealing with terrorism fight. He said, you take away the money, there's a way to combat terrorism. I agree. Let's take away their money. Legalize it, regulate and control it, and you take away the cartel's money and their power and influence.
Ross mentioned earlier the family. Every time you go someplace, and since I speak primarily to Republican crowds, this is probably the first time I've spoken to a friendly crowd in a long, long time. They always mention the kids, and I do too. I see 1.96 million children have a parent or family or other close member in jail on any given day. That's the Bureau of Justice Statistics. Five million more have parents who have been incarcerated or on probation or parole. 40% of the 1.8 million adults in jail and prison have a parent, brother, or sister behind bars. It's not the place to go for a family reunion. And 25% of the kids have lived in a foster home or institution, the ones that will go to prison this year. Now why are they in that home or institution? Because their mom and dad might have been picked up for possession of weed, one of them goes to prison, or they take the family away from them because they've been arrested because we, Russ, as Russ mentioned, you can't have cannabis in a house with children, my goodness. You can have alcohol, you can have tobacco, and you can have loaded firearms, but not marijuana. So if you can't see, or if the government can't see that 82% of the arrests which are for nonviolent drug offenses, they're the cause of this problem. Use this in your arguments that prohibition causes the problems, not the drugs themselves. In some parts of my presentation, I always have to say, LEAP does not condone or encourage the use of any drugs, either legal or illegal. But truth in advertising, my drug of choice is Johnny Walker Black. And if you saw the, saw the when, when alcohol was finally legalized, they asked the, uh, the guy in charge of the alcohol eradication program, what are you gonna do? He said, well, I'm gonna go out and have a drink. I don't know if I'll go out and have a smoke because I also have been blessed with asthma most of my life, so I don't think it would go along real good. You think it works for that too? Okay. The uh, amount of time we spend on nonviolent offenses is taking away way too much time from our violent stuff. Murder in Minnesota, 54% of the crimes were solved. 30 years ago, that number was in its 80s. Forcible rape, 40.3% are resolved. I read the other day, or saw on CNN, I think it was, there's 400,000 rape cases in the United States of America that have not been processed. 400,000, there's more than 20,000 in the state of Texas alone. We don't have the money to process rape cases, crimes against people, but we have the money to put people that cause no harm to others in prison. Robbery, 28.2% in the aggravated rate. But the ones I really want to focus on are burglary, 12.4%. Someone breaks into your home and we only solve 12.4% of those crimes? That's, that's a travesty. No police chief in the country should be able to look you in the face. Theft, 21%. Motor vehicle theft. Over a million cars are stolen a year in this country. 11.8% are ever solved. That's costing you the taxpayer about $5 billion a year in added premiums. Now you stack that on top of the $79 billion a year we're wasting on the drug war, all these other things, it starts to get to be serious change. Jack Cole is the uh, LEAP co-founder. He run these numbers just for grins because when you arrest a marijuana smoker or possessor, it's a 100% arrest uh, clearance rate because the crime hadn't even been committed until you made the arrest. No one had reported it, it's not open in the books, they make the arrest, it's a cleared crime. So, the murder 36, well these numbers are a little different because they change of course. Robbery is 73% for burglary, 88. Unsolved crime rate for all is 81%. But when the zero rate on solved crime for drugs, it drops it to 72%. So the police chief just improved his clearance record by almost 10%. I'm not counting the overtime money that the cop makes for getting the low hanging fruit, three hours of overtime when he goes in the next day to 
have the hearing for the guy you arrested the night before. And if there were two of them, they both go. It's a money train. I don't know if you guys know it, but here in Fort Worth, your police officers are making over 100 grand a year. I'd love to be doing that. Well, not being a police officer, but make 100 grand a year. All right, drug, crime, drug offenses are consensual crimes. There are other consensual crimes on the book that one day probably should be lifted as well. But the only way they can get you to do it, to, to rat on your buddy, is what we all did. You arrest somebody for something and you say to him, you want to do this all by yourself or you want to share the pain? I actually got an informant killed in Puerto Rico. I didn't get him killed, he got himself killed. But I busted him with, uh, with 1,350 1, pounds of cocaine that were airdropped into Arecibo in Puerto Rico. And I told him, plain and simple, you can do the 20 years yourself or you can share it. You've got to think about this. This is your decision to make. So he decided that he would cooperate. We busted 20 some odd other members of the gang members of, of this outfit. And then since our certain asset or parts of our community are a little more corrupt than others, they let him out of jail for Christmas and uh, the cartel whacked him. I don't think it was an accident. <clears throat> he was from Corpus Christi, by the way. He was a fellow Texan. That really made me even more angry. We have to ask ourselves, are we addicted to drug war money? Why does this keep going on? Why, when everybody knows the drug war has failed, why do we continue to pursue it? Every cop will tell you, every cop will tell you that it's all about the money. Follow the money, you find the crime. This is just a quick brief view of it. This is the money that's being spent. You've seen that slide. Someone mentioned earlier they didn't know how much money, they weren't an economist. Jeffrey Myron says it'd be $88 billion a year. This is $207 million in $100 bills. You've all seen these photos. 500 billion, which is a t the estimated amount of money made a year off drugs are there. Uh, take a kid to work day, never went with me again. I don't know why. <laughs> Had a good view of the airport. This report was put out last week by the Government Accounting Office, right after ONDCP asked for $27 billion for their new budget this year. And as you can see, the Government Accounting Office spanked the ONDCP for asking for that much money, saying they haven't met any of their goals. They haven't met any of their goals since the beginning. So maybe there is the change starting to come in Washington, D.C. We have to hope there is. Our mission is to well, first we support legalization of all drugs, not just cannabis, all drugs, because we believe you have to take the crime, to get the crime and violence out of it, to improve public safety, you've got to take the cartels and the drug gangs, the people that are killing other people, out of the matrix. Because we all know that Budweiser and Slits, I mean Slits, now my age is showing, Budweiser and, and Lone Star don't fight it out on the street corner for distribution rights but the cartels do because they can't go to court. They have no other way to settle their differences. Now, the kids, the one we're most concerned with are the teenagers because that's when their brains are still developing, et cetera, and they don't want them using cannabis. But look what happened in Portugal when they legalized or decriminalized, they didn't legalize. There's 20 some odd countries in the world now that have decriminalized drugs. They can't legalize them because of the United Nations treaties. But those are impressive numbers. Heroin over is down by 52% because you're not getting unregulated heroin anymore. In Switzerland, they started a free heroin program. Free, not really free, but it was given to you in a clinic, clinical heroin shot up with clean needles, et cetera, et cetera. Look at that. Not one overdose death since they started the program and felony crime is down by 60%. I believe in the United States that legalizing drugs would reduce our crime and violence by about 80%. Several countries in the Western Hemisphere in their meeting or, or met just last week down in, in Guatemala, Organization of American States, and the United States no longer has the bully pulpit because the other countries are standing up and fighting back now and saying, we're the ones dying, we need to stop this.
Someone mentioned earlier about how much it costs to educate a kid. This is an SSDP slide. Okay, when drugs are needed, what are we gonna have? First, we're gonna have clean, regulated drugs. In other words, your cannabis is gonna not have pesticides on it. It's not gonna be infested with mold. It's not gonna cause possible lung infection by smoking these impurities in it. These are positive things, and I think we need to focus on them. Less crowded prisons, and what will that do? That means we might possibly rehabilitate some of the criminals we have in prison. We don't rehabilitate them today because our prisons are full. When somebody goes in one door, he comes out another one. And we got a 62% recidivism rate for people going back to prison. We need to fix that. Education, it's worked with cigarettes, it's worked with alcohol, it will also work with cannabis. Now, I don't mean use of cannabis, I'm talking about abuse. People just that, that want to stay stoned seven by 24, which is not make you very productive. Well, not people I've known, maybe some people can. Treatment instead of punishment, of course. If you have a serious problem with drugs, you should get treatment. You should be able to go and get treatment without having fear of going to jail. Reduce violence, clearly. The four Bs, and uh, the director I mentioned this earlier. We're gonna win this. Well, we have to be gracious in victory. Don't thumb your nose at them, no na 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 na. We have to be responsible users, responsible consumers, we'll call it. You have to be assertive of your rights and that you have a right to do th what you do to yourself is of no business of the government. And a matter of fact, a great Republican even mentioned that. Ronald Reagan said that government exists to protect us from each other. It fails when it tries to protect us from ourselves. Of course, his wife then went on with the Just Say No campaign after that. And I'll be careful, of course, be careful. Ethan said, it ain't going to legalize itself. Now, you guys all know Ethan Nadelman, and he's right. Keep working, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing the right thing for the right reason. Most of you. No, I'm kidding. No, keep, keep, keep up the good work. You guys have done it. Four decades, you've been around as long as the, as the drug war has. Leap's only been around 11 years. But If you guys need someone to have your six, LEAP has got your six, give us a call. Go to our website, www.copsaylegalizeddrugs.com. If you're gonna meet with a legislator or a panel or something and you need a little, little backup, call us. We will send someone to back you up. If we have a speaker in that area, we'll definitely do it. And if it's a, and I hate to say the word important enough because they're all important, but if it's a big committee meeting or something, I will personally drive to Austin or something for that myself. Uh, I've been invited down a few times, but I haven't gone because of the, of the situation I didn't think was right at the time. This is some information for us. That's our other leap. That's our Republican leap site, www.leap.cc, and our libertarian one is copstatelegalizeddrug.com. Just kidding. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, do I have any time left at all? No? Okay. I'll take questions usually. But thanks a lot for having me. It's a real pleasure. Thank you.